In the past few seasons, we've seen big time impacts from true freshmen. We've seen true freshmen burst out of the scene in their first season in college football. Who is it going to be this year? Which true freshmen are going to make an immediate impact in the Big Ten in 2023? Before we get into that, just a reminder to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Big Ten content all offseason long. Always crush that like button to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses. I didn't want to pick guys from multiple positions. Like I didn't want to put two or three wide receivers on this list. I didn't want to pick guys from the same school. I didn't want to pick a couple of guys from Michigan, a couple of guys from Ohio state, a couple of guys from Wisconsin. I wanted to go with one school and one position. I got four guys that I think could really have the opportunity to stand out in 2023 in the big 10 conference. I want to start with a wide receiver at the wide receiver factory, the Ohio State University, and it's Carnell Tate. I saw his tape in the spring game. I saw his length, his ability to get over the top in some plays, especially on the great touchdown toss he got um, from probable starting quarterback Kyle McCord. I look at Carnell Tate and how he fits into Ohio State, how he fits into this roster, how he fits into this depth start in 2023, and I believe he could get a great opportunity to stand out in key situations for the Buckeyes. When everybody's focused on Marvin Harrison Jr., when everybody's focused on Emeka Buka, and even Julian Fleming, those are your big three wide receivers at Ohio State. Carnell Tate is going to be out there, and he's a pretty damn good option <laughs> at number four for Ohio State. And I mentioned at the top of the video, I didn't want to put multiple guys from the same school. Ohio State killed it in recruiting at the wide receiver position. You look at Brandon Ennis, uh, you look at Noah Rogers, all could be involved as well. True freshman coming in at the wide receiver position. But I look at Carnell Tate as maybe the guy that could really uh, stand out like he did in this spring football game. You look at other guys that could maybe be that number four wide receiver in Columbus. You look at Xavier Johnson. You look at Jaden Ballard. I just don't know. I look at Carnell Tate and I see a future star. When you look at who's it going to be after Marvin? Who's it going to be after a Mecca? Who's it going to be after this current crop of Buckeyes at wide receiver? It's going to be Carnell Tate. And Carnell Tate is going to be in key situations where those three guys are on the field and maybe he's the fourth uh, wide receiver in, in a one running back set for the Ohio State Buckeyes. When everybody's looking at those guys, Carnell Tate might get a favorable matchup one-on-one. -on -one. Not a lot of guys in the Big Ten might be able to cover Carnell Tate one-on-one -on -one in that scenario. So I think Carnell Tate's going to do have a great opportunity um, to really break out of the wide receiver position at Ohio State. The next guy I want to highlight is by Job, number one player in the state of Oklahoma this year, edge rusher at Michigan State. Now, before I say this, Michigan State is going to have a good front seven this season. You look at Chris Bogle uh, returning. You look at Jacoby Winman returning. You look at Cal Halliday at linebacker. You look at Tamusia Delier, the transfer coming in uh, from Texas A&M that is going to be on the exterior on the defensive line as well. There are going to be guys up front. By Job is not going to step in and be a starter at least day number one or week number one at Michigan State. But I could very well see By Job come into the game third and seven. On third and eight, on third and long, saying, dude, you got one job. Get to the quarterback. I look at By Joe's pass rushing skills, and he is in the perfect mold of what you want um, out, of an, out of an edge rusher. Excuse me. This is a guy that can get to the quarterback. This is a guy that I believe can make plays for Michigan State this season. He's going to have a great opportunity to add to what this front seven has at Michigan State. And this front seven could possibly be the strength of the Spartans team in 2023. Let's move on to Wisconsin, where four-star safety Braden Moore could get an opportunity, right? This is a Wisconsin team that's kind of shifting around their scheme with Mike Tressel coming in. They're looking at a 3-3-5 
defensive scheme, and they need help in the secondary. I think their front seven, especially their linebacking group, is pretty solid at Wisconsin, but outside of Alexander Smith in the secondary, they need some help. Like, you're looking at a 3-3-5. They, they worked in spring ball with some dollar packages. You know, you're 2 4 six. They're going to need a lot of depth in the defensive backfield. In spring ball, they move Braden Moore from safety to nickel, which tells me they want him involved in these packages where they're rolling out five defensive backs, where they're rolling out six defensive backs. I believe he's going to get a great opportunity to step in and play right away. This is more of a necessity. I look at Braden Moore. I think he's a solid player. I think he's going to be a solid player at Wisconsin. He's going to get an opportunity out of necessity. Wisconsin's looking for some guys in the transfer portal to kind of fill in the back end of their defense. Braden Moore might just have to step up in that type of situation. This is all about opportunity. With freshmen, this is about opportunity. Braden Moore is going to have that opportunity. The last guy I'm going to stick with here in my impact freshman list, Darius Taylor, running back at Minnesota. How do you replace Muhammad Ibrahim? You don't, at least not with one guy. This is going to be a stable of running backs at Minnesota. This is going to be a rotation. It's not just going to be Sean Tyler. It's not just just going to be Zach Evans. It's sure not going to be just Darius Taylor, Bryce Williams. It is going to be a rotation. This is the sixth year for Bryce Williams. It would not surprise me to see Darius Taylor, the prize of this Minnesota recruiting class, come in and replace Bryce as the number three back. I believe Sean Tyler and Zach Evans Um, are probably ahead of the pack at number one and number two, but it would not surprise me to see Darius Taylor involved in a three-man rotation. There might even be a four-man rotation, as I mentioned Bryce Williams um, here before. He got good reps in the spring game. He looked good in the spring game. It looks like he's up to speed to be a big 10 running back right now. And this is about opportunity. When you got guys competing for the same spot, opportunity, competition, breeds excellence. I believe all of these Minnesota running backs are going to get better because they're all going to be competing with each other. The theme of this video is the opportunity. All four of these guys are going to have the opportunity to stand out in 2023. I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think these guys are going to come in right away and have an impactful season? In the Big Ten, would you have put in some other guys on this list as well? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We will see you in the next one.